Welcome to another episode of What I Learned from Bobby Hennett. In this episode, you know, I'm not doing a decoding. I'm just going to see what comes out of my mouth. And that is, that is I'm going to talk about Paul Mooney. And I did not research a lot on him. I think enough. I watched maybe four or five videos. Uh, and one of those was from Fame and Sacrifice. But she wasn't saying that he was sacrificed. And I'm not saying that he was sacrificed. Well, a lot of people can live a long time. Let's put that card on the table. Black people can live a very long time. They don't want you to know that. Now, I have not seen where Paul Mooney is shown to be sick on any level whatsoever. So if somebody wants to share a link where you can, you know, it shows that he was sick or something, you can do that. Uh, 79 is not old for a black person. Black people, their age, you might you can take 20 years off of their age compared to the beast who is a living, uh, living rot. Okay? Um, if you... If you, um, look, I have a lot of time to really experience life, a slower paced life. And if you, if you, let's just, let me just say this. I notice a difference in the food. Um, obviously, you know that the seeds, they're destroying the seeds. I have tried to plant things that have a seed and the fucking thing won't grow. But, you know, what I, what I noticed, I mean, what I, what I bear witness to is that the food, I'm talking about vegetables and specifically, I'm going to talk about a bell pepper. Tried to grow the seeds, it didn't work. Because the seeds, like, um, this is the thing. If you try to take the seeds out and they look like they're the right size and they look fine and you try to dry them out and they start turning brown, that's GMO. That's one sign of GMO because the carbon is getting released out of it and it doesn't have the protective shell, the outer shell to keep it preserved perfectly as an immortal shell because inside is the melanin magic for the shell to reproduce itself to infinity but if it's uh, it's deteriorating you know when it starts getting black that will tell you that shows you that that um, the carbon is going out of it the life force is going out of it. So put that card on the table. Now, even if there's some seeds that don't turn black, uh, if they're not growing, okay, then the seeds inside is dead. All right, so I'm giving you the two examples of, of how to know the seed is not right. It shouldn't be turning black. Okay, uh, point number three is that the food will decay early and it will smell like pure garbage. Now, usually a rotten vegetable doesn't smell putrid. Now, I know there's a lot of young people and they, they have no idea the changes that has happened only in the past 30 years. 
they don't have any idea. They're 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 a product of the current generation, so they can't even understand. They don't realize that they've always had GMO food. I have experienced non-GMO food. Now, I'm not saying that it's just because of this time frame, but I'm just uh, trying to explain to you um, like a generational difference where some people won't, they don't understand the difference in the food. They're not able to sense it themselves. They can say, oh yeah, I know we're all eating GMO foods, but they don't, they're not experiencing what it really means. I'm experiencing, I'm telling you that I'm bearing witness to what that thing really means. It doesn't have the electromagnetic field that keeps it preserved. And I'm explaining that in layman's terms. In scientific terms, according to the universe, it doesn't have it doesn't have the seed that comes from nature, period. You know, the perfect immortal seed. It doesn't have it. And thirdly, it prematurely rots, but it also smells like rot. So just put those cards on the table. Now, we're going to compare um, GMO foods to how the beast um, show how the beast changes in his aging process compared to a melanated person. But we don't even have to compare. You can you you notice it. But you, you know, you think it's cute and you say, oh, black don't crack. No, it's not about black not cracking. It's about their DNA structure is unnatural. It's about, how do I say this? That, that's all that it's about. Their DNA, their DNA structure is not the same. They do not have the full uh, DNA strands. And that's according to Laila Africa. Uh, you have degenerated too. You don't have the functioning of the 12 that you're supposed to. Um, I think that's what it is. I think he, well, anyway, I'm not going to quote numbers because I don't remember but you have more functioning DNA strands than they do, okay? That's a scientific difference that you, that is according to the research of, um, that they have like every 10 years called a melanin conference, which no black person is allowed to step foot in. So put that card on the table. Um, I really don't want to explain anything further. Just look up some pictures of um, aging white people. And by the time they're 35, they're breaking down looking like they're 50. That's not an exaggeration. Um, their hair goes gray faster. Their skin literally deteriorates. You know, they get skin cancer, but they have made that like normal like oh everybody gets skin cancer oh and you need to get a skin uh screening oh and even black people get skin cancer and that's a motherfucking lie you can't get skin cancer you can't your you the sun your skin is like a solar panel. It conserves heat even when it's exposed to heat. It, it lives off of the sun. It's energizing from the sun. So anyway, and 
you know, this concept of radiation from the sun is bullshit. Because the sun is the natural, is a natural, uh, well, sustainer of the universe. The sun can never hurt you. Now, you take that in balance. We're not talking about you laying out in the sun 24 hours. Obviously, we're not talking about that. Even though a black person could do that. However, the sun is very intense in the summers and certain seasons. And of course, you, it's fucking hot. So I don't need some concrete-headed, obtuse dummy trying to argue the point of what I'm saying. You take information in balance, in a balanced way. There's a time that it applies but obviously, if you do it in the extreme, then you have fucked up the balance of it. So let's put that card on the table. So, what am I saying about Paul Mooney? Uh, I'm saying the point is that black people, their melanin keeps them young. And put that card on the table. Um, I'm going to say another thing. The point that I just said is illustrated in the movie. I'm just giving you, I'm just throwing out an example to you. You should know that your melanin keeps you young if you're a black person. Okay? You should know that already. But um, there's a movie called Death Becomes Her. And it's with Meryl Streep and... Um, I forgot the other lady's name. Burt Reynolds' wife or whatever. Goldie Hawn. Um, that was about melanin. The thing they were drinking was melanin. Now, put that card on the table. Um, the thing is, and that movie was about, uh, there was a magic potion that kept them young. And that magic potion was melanin. And I only now, at a higher conscious level, can make that connection um put that card on the table now there's something i want to let me try to get this back to paul mooney what did i learn about paul mooney well number one he's an uncle tom okay but he's so good they let him live a long time the best ones the best ass lickers and ass kickers and toe munchers of the beast, they let them live a long time. The people that are, that are uh, generally, generationally affecting generations, you know, and keep perpetuating a lie, or um, they... Um, They, well, no, no, I'm not going to say anything else. Put that card on the table. Those people are allowed to live long. Aretha was allowed to live long, right? Because she just kept singing and dancing. Singing and dancing. Singing and dancing. And, and her songs were like, uh, you know, it's hard to describe, but it's like in the midst of uh, so-called civil rights, which you shouldn't even have such a thing because it's human rights. It's not civil rights. It's being a human being. Um, in the midst of that, you know, she came out with the song Respect. And, you know, it was just that these people... They never, they never stand up against the beast, period. That's all I can say. Yes, they're marching, but marching doesn't do anything. The beast is beating your ass down, murdering you. The beast doesn't, the beast can only, only respond to 
a higher beast that will beat his ass down. But since they control the weaponry and they have an army and they have Roman soldiers called police, then, you know, you are at their mercy because you are not armed and they won't let you be armed either. You know, the Black Panthers decided enough is enough. And what did they do? Attack the Black Panthers. So let's put that card on the table. What am I saying about Paul Mooney? He was a good Uncle Tom for many years. One of the lies he perpetuated that really gave him a crown from the beast is that he always said that the black people in America are stolen slaves. That's a lie. You're the indigenous. You can look at Paul Mooney and see that he's the indigenous. But the thing is, people think that an Indian has to look a certain way. And the word Indian is a made up word too. The word Indian comes from the word indigo, which comes from blue black, which means black. Okay. Um, it's a melanated person. It's not a red skin person. It's a melanated person. And the football teams that they, the football team names that they have today are all ripoffs of the tribes of that region. So if you're from Cleveland, then you have the Cleveland Indians, then you're the tribe of that region of Cleveland. So anyway, put that card on the table. That's something to think about. Um, what did I learn about Paul Mooney? It was said that he perpetrated a rape upon Richard Pryor's son. Now, the information presented it said that Richard Pryor's son said that um, however he wouldn't make it public uh, Richard Pryor's son would not I think it was like Richard Pryor's son would not say that it happened or didn't happen I think that's what it, the video that I watched said but do you think that Richard Pryor would be angry about something that didn't happen? I mean, for people to say that didn't happen, how you, do you think Richard Pryor is just going to get angry about that kind of thing? Anyway, this is what I learned. This, this was the information. Richard Pryor learned that Paul Mooney raped a son when he was young. But Richard Pryor didn't know that until later, much later, until he, excuse me, after his son was an adult. Excuse me. So, Richard Pryor was like, look, we can fuck around, and we've done the doo-doo to get the fame that we have, but you should not dare be doing that to my son. And Richard Pryor wanted to kill Paul Mooney, or have him killed. What happened to Richard Pryor? He supposedly set himself on fire. Do you, like, people believe anything on TV. Do you believe that he would, even though he, they say he was on drugs or whatever? I don't believe he set himself on fire. How... How? Just explain this. I don't do drugs. I don't have any, any experience with drugs. I don't know how that feels. But what would make you set yourself on fire? You'd have to, I don't know how he set himself on fire. I guess with gasoline or something. I don't know. I don't know. How can you set yourself on fire? Yes, we know there's a boo, um, some Buddhists supposedly did that out of protest. I don't really even believe that shit, to be honest. Now that I'm talking about Richard Pryor, I don't believe that backstory. But what would make him, in his experience of drugs, 
drugs affect your melanin and it either brings you a euphoria or it brings you down depressed so i it doesn't make sense that you would burn yourself uh, uh you know anyway my spirit is in my spirit and my logic and my common sense tells me that and now knowing this story that Richard Pryor did not burn himself. I never thought he did. And I barely even keep up with Richard Pryor. I was a little